So welcome to this new video of my YouTube series getting started with Eclipse MicroProfile 3.0. In this video I'm going to cover the MicroProfile fault tolerance specification. With the fault tolerance specification you get a set of interceptor bindings to build resilient and fault tolerance services. So you have access to, to well-known patterns for distributed systems like circuit breakers or bulkheads. To give you an example how these interceptor bindings work, I'm going to cover all of them with a small example. And as always, I'm deploying my application with Watch and Deploy to a running Open Liberty. And on every code change, we'll get a new deployment and see the output here in the console. So let's start with the first interceptor binding, which is the fallback. So imagine you have a method here which makes a remote call to a REST API. In this case, I'm using a placeholder API in the internet. So this remote call to this REST API might fail due to various reasons. So the, there might be a network issue, the remote system might be down or returning in 500. And in this case, um, we don't want to cascade the failure into our system, but we want to provide a fallback behavior so our business logic can work as expected. So in this example here, I'm using the JuxRS client to make a call to this endpoint. Let's first fix the, the URL that you see it will work. And I'm using the add fallback annotation from MicroProfile Fault Tolerance, where we can either specify a class, as you see here, and this class then has to implement this fallback handler interface and with a Java object you want to return from your, from your original method. And here I'm providing a, bis, a default behavior where I'm just returning a, a hard-coded JSON object. But at first see that this remote call succeeds, so the, the happy path. So in here, I'm calling my random data provider and say, get post by ID. It's just a sample endpoint. It will always return something. Let's wait until the, the change is deployed. And here you can see this is the, the actual result from this remote API. So let's now simulate a failure. So here I will change the URL. So this URL is not present, so it will definitely fail. And let's see what's happened what will happen. Yes, and here you can now see we did not get our previous result, but this hard-coded result I specified here. So within this handle method you have to implement, you will also get access to the execution context and can, for example, access the parameters which were used on your original method. Another way you can specify a fallback method is to provide the name of a method. So in this example, let's say here fallback method equals get default post. So here I'm providing a method with this name. It has to have the same signature as our original method, otherwise it wouldn't work. So this is also possible. Let's save and see it. Yes, so here we got, in the previous example, we got from fallback handler, which was the class I showed you. And now we are getting um, from method. So this fallback behavior is now taking place. Let's have a look at the next pattern we have access to with MicroProfile fault tolerance, with is, which is the circuit breaker. So the circuit breaker is a pattern in a distributed system where you don't want to access a remote system further when you already know it's, it's down or it's not responding in a recent time. So there are three states a circuit breaker can have. It, the one is closed, which is the default state. So in the closed state, our call to a remote system will take place. There is another state which is the open state. This happens when a specified threshold is met. So in this case we will not access the remote system as we know the remote system is down or don't want to overload it further. 
and we will just get our fallback method. And there is a second, a uh, third state, which is half open. So once we are in the open state, we will try to get back to the closed state, which is the original state and the, the happy path. And therefore we enter a half open state after a predefined delay. So where we will try to again access the system and see if it's up and running again. So with microprofile fault tolerance, you get this add circuit breaker annotation and can specify all these values to configure your, your circuit breaker in detail. So one of the most important one is the request volume threshold. Yeah, I specified five, which means that we will monitor somehow five uh, calls and we'll look at the failure ratio to determine whether we should open our circuit breaker or not. And in this example, I've specified a failure ratio for, of 50% meaning if 50% of five calls fail, we will enter the, the open state. So in this example, if three calls of five in a row fail, we will be in the open state. With the delay, we specify when to enter the half open state. So in this example, after 500 milliseconds, we will enter the half open state if our circuit breaker is open. And within the half open state, we need uh, 10 succeeding calls to be back again in the closed state where everything operates as defined. To provide you an example to show you how the circuit breaker works, I am using here a more um, simulated approach. So I'm generating a, a random number and see if it's less than 300. And in this case, it's, a, it's no failure we will return a string, otherwise we will sort of throw an exception. So in, in a real world example, this would be a call to a remote system, but this is quite hard to simulate for now and therefore I'm using this approach. So to now show you how it works, let's comment this. Let's uh, access our method several times to show you the circuit breaker in action. Let's do it 30 times. And let's print out, let's say get random data and let's sleep for, let's say 500 milliseconds so we will actually see something and it won't be too fast. Let's save and wait until it's deployed. And let's see what's happening. So here you now see, so it's it's random, but you will see here there is a sequence of fallback dukes. So the sequence of fallback dukes is a dukes is when we are in the the open state or in the half open, where our circuit breaker um, won't let us uh, reach our method, but returns the fallback method we specified here. So also here I'm using the fallback method, which I showed you in the previous example. So you can combine these. So once our circuit breaker is open or half open, I'm here specifying the fallback method, um, which just returns this fallback duke, as you will see it in the console. So it's quite hard to, to show you a really good example, but I think you should now get where to use it and how you can configure the circuit breaker. The next interceptor band binding is a little bit more easy to explain. This is the timeout. So if you have, for example, long running tasks or you request data from a remote system, but have to respond in a well-defined response time, and don't want to exceed it, you can use this at timeout method and specify a, a value. So if our method here is running for more than four seconds, it will throw an exception. And in this case, also I'm combining it with the add fallback annotation, return fallback data and not proceed any longer. So let's see it in action. Let's remove this first. And let's say get long running task. So I've specified a sleep of four and a half seconds. So our timeout should definitely kick in. So let's wait for seconds. And then, yeah, we should see on the console the output of our fallback behavior as we were out of this 
timeout threshold. If we reduce our thread point sleep, we should see Duke. So let's also test this, that it works. And with this reduced through sleeping time here, we will now get our actual result of, of Duke. Next, we can make use of a retry mechanism with microprofile fault tolerance. We get an at retry annotation where we can specify um, how many retries we want to have. We can also specify a delay between each invocation of our retry and also a jitter, which is a, a random time frame, which will be added or subtracted from our delay. So in this example, um, the total delay will be something between 300 and up to 700 milliseconds. But in total, we specify that if the retrying takes more than 500 milliseconds, we will, like with the timeout, throw um, not proceed with this method any longer. So here I've simulated an access to a, let's call it flaky service. And also here I'm creating a random number and check if it's less than 50. And if it's less than 50, it's a success ca case. Otherwise, I'm throwing an exception to show you the retry mechanism. Let's do this. So let's say here, get no, it was excess flaky service and dependent. Yes, so and the output here you can see. So we retried it for I would say seven times, and the eighth retry was a success. Let's delete this to get a new deployment and see that this wasn't hard coded. Now, and now you can see here, um, we tried it for 10 times, um, but within these 10 times, we didn't get a success. So we again get our fallback behavior, which is the fallback duke, and not the flaky duke, uh, which is the, the happy path. Last but not least, we can make use of the bulkhead pattern with the at bulkhead annotation and isolate our, our isolate possible failures in our system to not cascade to other parts of the system. So if one remote service is down or taking too much time, it won't affect other remote calls to other systems, which may take place in parallel. So here I'm returning a string wrapped as a future. You also see a other annotation of microprofile fault tolerance, the asynchronous annotation. When we use this I guess, asynchronous annotation, we have to return a future or a completion stage and then our method will get executed asynchronously. To provide you an example of this bulkhead, so in this example I specified five. This means that only five calls to this method can happen in parallel. So imagine this code here would call a different server which, is, which responds in a really slow way. And if there wouldn't be a bulkhead and our application would occupy all of our threads to access the systems, other parts won't be able to work. So here I've specified five, which, which means that only five concurrent calls of this method are allowed and others have to wait in a queue and only get executed once the, the other calls um, succeeded or, or failed in this example. To provide you an example how it looks like, I'm just printing out the name I'm passing in here and sleep for two seconds. So we will see that only five executions are happening in parallel and others have to wait until they are executed. So let's comment this and let's spawn five or let's say 10 threads which try to execute this method in parallel and see what happens. So let's also give each thread a name so we will see it in the console. So the name of the thread will be the number of E and let's spawn a new thread. Okay. 
and within this thread we will say get concurrent service data which I showed you before and pass in the thread name and then start it this is wrong we are in Java and not in JavaScript and let's also print here which thread started here so this should print all our threads but the sixth and further threads have to wait. Let's save it and wait for the console output. So as you've seen here we was like a batch we got all of our threads started but only five were accessing it in parallel and once they finished the other five were allowed to enter this method. If we use this bucket annotation alongside at asynchronous we get thread isolation, otherwise it would be isolated by using uh, semaphores. Let's save it again, so maybe it was a little bit too quick. And now we see five are currently accessing it and the other five have to wait until they are finished and then can proceed with this call. In addition to this interceptor bindings, the microprofile fault tolerance specification has also a nice integration with microprofile metrics. So while using this annotations, which I showed you with the previous example, they all report metrics and we can have access to them. So in this example, I'm using um, Open Liberty, which exposes the metrics here. And if you scroll down, you will see there are a lot of additional metrics besides the basic ones like the JVM memory and here you will get information about all the interceptor bindings. So here for example we'll get a total number of our concurrent service data calls which we protected with a bulkhead or we can have a look at the execution duration of our bulkheads, how long they took, we get the different percentiles if we want to display them with graphs and all of this works out of the box you don't have to configure anything just access these metrics endpoint or scrape it with tool of your choice and then display it to monitor it that's everything i wanted to share with you about the microprofile fault tolerance specification have fun using it